uh, flashbacks can be a problem though because I think it can be really lazy writing. Like they uh, they works in some cases. I agree with you. I think they can be lazy writing. I, I think in think... this in, I think in this instance, like you can't. It's one of those things. It's like oh well, they could just do like that's the mentality. I'm just they, saying it would be better than what we have right now. I like guess. At least we'd be able to under, well, see and understand Sabine's connection with Ezra. I'm not saying that's what they have to do. Uh, no, I'm just saying. I, I think that we would have been able to understand her connection with Ezra because we, we learn she has some sort of connection with someone named Ezra, right? Like, we do get that early on. The problem is, well, is, I mean, is like that it's what not makes executed. Him important? What, why is he so well, important for her to forsake everyone? was central to him that's uh that's that kind of deal that's fixed in a show that uses dialogue properly right you don't like that's the thing is like i just flashbacks need to be able to fill in um points that cannot be made in the current like timeline so for instance like and, and we can get into it with one piece i'm tired of talking about yep. it uh, uh, so let's do it whatever but uh, it's a good transition too. In One Piece, um, they use flashbacks to fill out the characters in something that you wouldn't be able to get otherwise, right? Um, it's not you don't. I don't think you get the same um, punch with uh, Sanji, Luffy, and Zoro, and um, Nami. Now. Uh, who's the other one? Uh, Oda, Cody, Co- no, Kobe. No, no, no. Hang on. His name. The he, he has a slingshot. His name's just slipping my mind. Oh, uh, I know Uso? the chat. Uh, Usopp. Usopp. That's uh, it. Usopp was kind of the weakest story for me. I it, it, like it works, but I think that the the other four characters in the show were just significantly more interesting in their uh, uh, their motivations. Their backstories, um, their personalities, I just I found to be a lot more interesting. Um, but his stuff, his stuff works well enough for me. I actually think that his, um, his uh, Usopp's love interest, I, I found to be a little bit more interesting than him. Um, yeah, like her whole story, What's I thought. Name? Yeah, uh, it, her name slipped in my mind right now. Sorry, I'm not. The, to, Kaya. So, Kaya. So to, I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna pull this up. So I just there are quite a few characters, and I am not crazy crazy familiar with One Piece. Um, wait, this is not the anime. Seriously? Uh, give me live action, please. Live action. Um, I, I think that, okay, so uh, let me put it this way. As far as the, when you do flashbacks is concerned. Um, I, I think that doing flashbacks in Rebels or not, excuse me, in Ahsoka would probably be very lazy versus as the intentionality behind doing it in one piece. And the need need to do it to add um, character to everyone that we're seeing in the present so that we understand, like, where they came from, right? Because we get motivations for them, we're introduced to the characters, and then we're getting a little bit of... Well, hey, here's here's some t- some some things that you might need to know uh, to bring things forward. Um, I think that uh, one of the things about One Piece, because like I'm not as like hot on this show as I think everyone else is. Mm. Um, I'm out. I'm almost like, and we've talked about it a little bit off the show. I, I'm almost a little frustrated that every like there are a lot of people who are loving this show but still refuse to watch Arcane. <laughs> and I'm just like I don't under I, I'm More just like you don't at this point I'm like you don't have an excuse like this show for me is like an eight um okay. and whereas Arcane is man I'm not gonna say it's a ten but it's as close to that as you can get yeah we one of these days I think I, I really need to like because that's another conversation too dude that I'm just like uh, so for those, I should have mentioned this during the Wheel of Time segment. For those of you that don't know, IGN, being IGN, has given the Wheel of Time season two, two of the episodes have received nines from them. Um, and at this point, it's why I, I've been 
somewhat militant from the time that we we started this podcast that I don't like giving things numbers ratings because they're pointless. So for IGN, let's say that IGN gives uh, an episode of Wheel of Time a nine, and then you know something that I really like a lot. Let, let's say episode three of uh, Arcane was mm-hmm. also given a nine. Um, my question would be, okay, how do you qualify both of these getting a nine? Like, how, like I need I need these broken down into like what is it that led you to give this episode this score? Yeah. What what was it? What what was it about what no, led exactly. up to this? What was it about this specific episode? Um what what are the metrics you're using? Yeah, exactly. Uh and, and that's where a lot of the problem comes in for me cuz I'm just like I I'm very confused about these two things that you have given a 9. It's like I you know, you don't need to write me like a 10-page essay like a, a enough of a breakdown of cuz I can tell you with so, for instance, like I would give, I I don't know what my my actual score would be for Arcane, but it would be very high, um, and a big portion of that, those first three episodes, and especially episode three, it's a really really cool arc, um, that leads to a payoff, that is the reason that certain characters become who they are for the rest of that season and probably for the rest of the show. It it influences actions, right? So you see that progression throughout the series of um, characters making specific choices, and a lot of it leads back to things that happen in those first three episodes and specifically that third episode. Mm. Um, you know, it's like, I remember, not, I wouldn't call it an argument, but I, I remember I w- had hopped into a stream back when Arcane was still sort of like, uh, relevant like season one was and they were kind of talking about uh, Jinx as a character and <clears throat> how she uh, she didn't make a lot of sense or like her actions didn't make sense and I literally was like guys Jinx saw her parents murdered in front of her I was like you don't <laughs> think that would have some kind of effect uh, on the way that she acts further down the line and one of them was like huh, yeah I guess so and the other two were like I don't know and I'm like you're telling me that it's not believable that someone would potentially come out troubled when uh, she, as a small child, saw the two most important people in her life murdered in front of her and then caused the death of essentially a father figure as a small child. Yep. <laughs> it's like, it's just not, you know, this is this is what I'm talking about. It's like, the arg- we gotta be like fair in the way that we look at things. It's like if the evidence is presented to you, it's like until you can give me evidence to the contrary of this, this is what we have to go with. Mm-hmm. And it's really clear with, with that show because they do a really good job of laying all of that out. Um, and I think that uh, One Piece does a really good job with a lot of that too. Um, I uh, I really do. I mean, like Usopp again, I think he's he's probably the weakest of the, the crew so far for me. Um, and I think some of that is just because I relate to everybody else's stories a little bit more. Um, you know, I really, uh, I, I think, um, I think, is it Sanji? Let me make sure I'm getting this right. The, uh, yeah, Sanji. with blonde hair. He's, I think he's my favorite character. Now, he and, um, uh, Zoro together, I, I just... I really like it. It feels like um, old school. The way that, uh, and some people will understand this reference, but it, it reminds me of um, uh, Angel and Spike from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Ah. Uh, it, it just the, they're frenemies, kind of. They, yes. they both recognize their skill set but they kind of hate each other. <laughs> now, and in that, there's also sort of a, a love triangle as well, but I don't think we're going to get that in this. I don't I don't think that's even part of the anime, really. Like, typically, with uh, most Japanese writing, those, like, love triangles and even, like, love stories, unless it's specifically, like, a romance story, they're not... They're hinted at sometimes, and, you know, maybe by the end of a show, certain characters will end up together, Uh, But typically, it's not a will-they-won't-they for 10 seasons, and then finally something happens, you know? 
Uh, right. It's it's very much a, a about the plot and the motivations of the characters, and and not typically about two of the characters falling in love while all of the motivation stuff is going on as well. Um, right. So unless the show decides to divert heavily from the source material, um, which from what I've heard they wanted to do, I think they wanted to try to do a thing with Nami and Zoro, um, and I think. Uh, the uh, creator, original creator of One Piece, he was like, no, we're not doing that. Like, he had a lot of control in what was going on with this. So, um, But yeah, man, I I really like it. Um, I, I think it's a little... I think the pacing's a little slow in the beginning, but the anime's a little slow in the beginning, too. <laughs> um, it, it's... It, for me, it's not the easiest thing to get into. I don't know how you kind of... Like were you One Piece wasn't? Yeah, One Piece. Were you were you like in it from the very beginning or or did it take a little while for it to warm up for you? It took uh let's see. It took for me, I got <laughs> I started to warm up to it more in the second episode. Okay. Uh, yeah. The first episode didn't pull me in. Um the second episode did. Uh and I probably wouldn't have content I'm thankful that I did. And yeah. I probably wouldn't have continued it after the first episode if it wasn't for my keeper wanting to uh, watch the Keep next episode. Mm-hmm. Yep, and I definitely think it. One of the things I liked about it is the morality behind it. I'll enjoy the uh, main character Luffy and his kind of happy, positive outlook on everything. Yeah. He, you know, um, and the fact that too he's, you know, with Kobe in the beginning. That's his name, right? Kobe. Kobe. Uh huh. Um, with Kobe in the beginning, he's like, "I'm not gonna force you to stay with me on my crew. I'm gonna make let you. I, I'm gonna I'll allow you, not allow you, but you're you're fine to take your own forge your, your own, own choice, path. Right? Yeah, yeah, like I like that quite a bit. And it 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 works. Uh, it it would. I think that you can make um the claim that a lot of that uh is because of the influences in Luffy's Luffy's life. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he, we see later on that there were people who wanted him to be his own man and there were people who wanted to force him down a specific path. And it would be incredibly hypocritical of Luffy to say that, you know, Colby needed to come with him and needed to be a pirate rather than him being like, no, forge your own path, find your own way. Um, this is yeah. my, this is what I believe my destiny is supposed to be. And, um, you know, I, I, I love the, like I, the guy that plays him, um, is so over the top and he's got, he really kind of understands the sort of like anime trope of what uh, a hero in one of these shows is like. Um, Cause like Naruto and um, uh, Black Clover and a number of other animes, like the characters are very similar in that way. They're uh, a little too, they're naive in, in some respects um, and they have to go through a lot of beatings, essentially, to get to where they want to be. Um, but they right. never... they it, It's like you were talking about. They have that positive attitude, that kind of, like, never give up. Um, you know, uh, Black Clover and Asta being, like, a, a, a more uh, recent example. Um, his whole thing is, like, constantly pushing past his limits uh, to become better. Uh, and, and that's the stuff you're talking about. Dude, I, I it, part of it might just be that it's, like... It's so nice to see something that isn't just like dour and like yeah, blaming, nihilistic. Yeah, blaming a certain group of victim. people for yeah the victim mentality um, and all that stuff. It's it's nice to actually see some positivity out there and creativity. I mean, the way this world seems is that there's very little land. Like it's kind of you know, for lack of a better word, in the central location, and then there's this water spread or ocean spread all throughout Uh um you know each of the there's just i can appreciate even if i disagree um in a lot of the ways they portray things i enjoyed the creativity behind each of the characters um i really enjoy the motivations we actually get to understand each character's motivation their backstory and how their current decisions all make sense based off what happened in their past Mm -hmm. um you know the narrative flows uh, it really picks up after the first episode for sure uh for me at least and, and you get a bit more in the second episode and then really that third 
uh, episodes, the third, fourth episode is a sweet spot in this show. Yes, um, I think that's where it really starts picking up. And um, I'm, I, as long as they maintain a lot of what they're doing with this, I'm really looking forward to a second season. I am too. Uh, especially now that we have the characters established. Because I think if, and it's, it's, it, I, I don't think I, if I was to like, I don't think I could knock points for this, but one of the things that I think is a weakness of the season is that we really don't get the crew together until close to the end, uh, like the four of them. And I know there are there are more people, more crewmates that I'm sure will be introduced as the show goes on. Um, and I am hoping to actually sit down and start making my way through the anime. Um, it's on uh, my I'm list, not. but there are a lot of episodes of this. I am good. A lot, 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 lot of I episodes. I'm actually fine with the crew not getting together till the end. And, you know, yeah. I just, what I don't want to happen is we get into the second season and they split them all up. Oh, they, I, don't think the, I, mean? I don't think they'll do it. I, I, yeah, it's it's the, uh, That's like the Guardians of the Galaxy 2 the problem. Galaxy trope. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, I do <laughs> like that each villain is unique as well and has their own character. My favorite one being Mihawk, um, the guy with the gigantic sword. Um, I enjoy, and, and, and this is the thing too, is like, everything makes sense. No one's just a Mary Sue or, you know, Zoro, even though he has this trauma from his past of losing his best friend. Uh, when he fights Mihawk, he doesn't automatically win just because of that. And just because he's been training for this long time. No, this is somebody he's going to have to keep on training to overcome, to be able to get to his level and beyond it. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. he, he He's not just... If this was Disney Star Wars, um, he would have defeated Mihawk then. Like, it would have been the Ray well, situation. <laughs> Mihawk probably would have been a woman. <laughs> yeah, that's true, too. <laughs> or he would have been, and then, yeah. Uh, or, uh, you know, Nami's character would have just constantly been winning and teaching the exactly. boys all of the she lessons. She actually had weaknesses and stuff, and I'm glad to She, enjoyed... like, breaks, dude. She's, like... I really want to watch this again. I, I again. She broke through in those last few episodes yes. a lot, and yeah. it was. I'm glad they kept like the arc of the story is very well told. Uh, yeah, and there are, uh, you know, she makes lots of mistakes. She's naive, you know, for and, and she's an interesting character because she comes off as being very sly very clever um you know she she does all of these different things uh you know you have the episode with uh Us Usopp's uh, lady friend um whose name I keep forgetting um Kaya Kaya and uh you know it sort of breaks Nami down a little bit it's sort of the, that little bit of her starting to show her true colors but then we re we f we come to find out um, that she's been manipulated this whole time, and she trusted someone that she never should have trusted, uh, and it shows a massive amount of weakness in her, um, yep. and it and it causes a major problem for her uh, at the end of the season, and her her like breakdown and like uh, the way that Luffy comes to sort of like lift her back up, and that's what's so cool about the show is that. Everything that the characters do in it, even if you're not like into it, everything makes sense. Yeah, everything they're, makes sense. You know what else makes sense too? Go ahead. Sorry. I was gonna say they're not acting out of character randomly for the sake of the plot moving forward. Um, like we were, you know, with the whole Ahsoka thing, where all of a sudden we get <clears throat> an episode where she's in this uh, world between worlds, and we're finding out that maybe she's like depressed or something and that that's not something that we you know she seen she's been very confident and um seems to know exactly what she needs to do and where she needs to go and then all of a sudden it's like oh no no that's not exactly what's going on um that sucks um w and what's great about this no matter which character it is in here um you their weaknesses are uh well defined Yep. Sometimes from the minute that you meet them, uh, it doesn't take long for you to realize. Okay, 
uh, Luffy is overconfident. Uh, he he has reasons for it, uh, but his overconfidence uh, almost gets him killed a number of times. Yep. Um, and I love, too, yeah. the weakness of his... And, and you're exactly right. The strengths are counteracted by their weaknesses, and even their powers have weaknesses, too. And so with Luffy, if seawater gets splashed on him, it ruins the effect from the devil's fruit on him, and he can mm-hmm. he can die. That's correct, right? Yeah. Yep. And it, it's his kryptonite, and it's worked so much, dude. That's it, it, thank you for bringing that up because that was something I was thinking about uh, in the show. Um, it's actually something that another an anime that is currently on the air did recently, but I won't talk about it right now because it's too spoilery for how long the episode's been out. Um, but th- when you have a character like Superman, for instance, or Luffy is a great example where he's borderline invincible. Yeah. Um, at least from from what we know right now, um, I'm sure that that'll get more developed as time goes on. Now, and everyone remember that this is coming from someone who has never seen the anime, and then someone who's only seen about five or six episodes of it, and is just familiar with the source material. Um, we don't have like a whole lot of like insight into what happens. Uh, later I'm just gonna go ahead and say I'm not watching a thousand episodes. I'm I'm checked out of that. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, you know. I enjoy, and maybe I'll change my mind if it keeps going. Uh, right? It's not what I would suggest f- for you to start with. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, dude, I know, it, and I've mentioned this to you, but I know people who are, it's like, oh, I'm new to anime. What should I watch? And someone will go, One Piece. And it's like, stop. Please stop. Yeah. Like, that's not, do you, are you just actively trying to get them to not watch anime? <laughs> yeah. That's such a, it's a huge investment, man. Um, there was something else I was going to say. I enjoy, too, how each of the ships have their own character, and they're all new oh, yes. um, and creative as well. That's a great and interesting aspect of this show, too. Um, the, uh, the villains are all weird and gross and yeah. fun. And, you know, I it, it, this, the show just it knows what it is. Oh, speaking of villains, uh, Arlong, I enjoy the aspect of, hey, the fish people have been this... Uh, uh, people group that's been enslaved and now there's some prejudice uh, f- you know uh, there's prejudice from a long history of you know, not being treated right and now they act uh as if they're superior to everyone else yeah. now too fish supremacy and, uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> they're gross looking too dude they did yeah <laughs> like his they his, his one there's one of his uh of arlong's crewmates the one that uh I think Usopp fights at the end where he blows him up with the that every time that guy was on screen, I was like, I was like, I don't even want to look at him. (laughs) This show has a charisma about it. It has an endearing quality with it. There's a good moral to each episode. um, And for the the whole season arc, uh, I, I, I just want a spinoff series with, uh, Sanji and Zoro. <laughs> Give me like a three episode mini series where they just are hanging out on an adventure together. Uh, Give me a three episode mini mini series of Mihawk. Oh he yeah, yeah, he's villain. he's cool, man. Um, they do, yeah, they do a really good job with him. You know, I okay. So this is a great way to talk about suspension of disbelief as well. Um stuff is introduced in the show and they don't feel the need to over explain why it's there. It's just a part of this world. And you kind of just go, well, that's weird. And you're like, all right. I mean, I guess that's just what it is. Uh, versus, you know, but then it, you pick up on it. Like well, sure. They, it, they start to establish the rules of the world. Well, I was thinking more with the, like the snail, the snail phones. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there's stuff yeah. in it. Cause sure. You're yeah, you're right. And I, that's, it's a great place to to transition into is um, the things that probably need to be explained to to keep things grounded uh, are because we can't just it's like we were saying you can't just have a show <clears throat> with like well you can do it I mean there are there are shows that are written this way but th- there has to be something interesting about uh, the show but for something like this you know Luffy needs a weakness it's gonna get boring after a while if he just constantly is overcoming. Um, every situation that he gets into and he's not learning from mistakes that he's made. Right. Um, he's exactly, he's selfish. I don't know if a lot of people caught like kind of picked up on it. Um, he's very self-motivated in the things that he's doing and his 
reasons for bringing the crew along are very selfish and not necessarily at the beginning about the crew. Yeah, it's about so he can become it's, great and right. find the one piece. Yeah, he needs a crew a so he point. can become king of the on that. Yeah, he can become king of the pirates so he can find the one piece. But as uh, the show progresses and he gets to know characters and characters get hurt or, you know, other things uh happen, uh, you begin to see him caring and he he does uh the actor does a really good job with his emotional switch where he goes from being happy go lucky to I've had enough of you. Uh, it's time to end this. Mm -hmm. uh, he's great. I, I really like the guy. I, I think he does a, a a wonderful job. There's like small critiques in this that I think, um, you know, I, I I could hardly even call him nitpicking, but it's stuff like uh, Luffy's uh, younger actor uh, when they do flashbacks uh, speaks better English than he does. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> I was like, all right. I mean, it, you know, again, it's, it's not you, you stuff over, that's world breaking. No, but. no, it, you you overlook it, but it is. It's a little funny that it's like as a kid he's speaking like perfect English, and then it's it's not. You know, his his accent comes through quite a bit more in the uh, <clears throat> in adult Luffy. Um, but all uh, the acting in this is really good. Yeah, it, uh, yeah. I, I the characters the characters are like wonderful, you know, Zoro. Okay. Again, it's it's this show is a is a great example of a lot of the stuff working correctly that we complain about with other things. You have Zoro is a stoic character, but he's not emotionless. He, it's not as if things don't uh, break through. Um that he can't have uh, a quippy relationship with Sanji. Um let's see. and have these emotional moments you, yeah, you, uh, regarding his past yeah you have a, a woman who has flaws which is like it's wild to say that that's like unique <laughs> as a character yeah. trait but yeah uh Na nami's great she has she, many many flaws um a, a nice redemption arc um you know I, there's like s other small things you know this actually had a surprisingly big budget um and i hope that over time, the uh, uh, you get to see some of the stuff start to just like look a little bit more like a high budget production. Uh, um, there are just like times that it looks a little bit cheap to me, but uh, I, I love the set design for the most part. When like when they're in um, in Ka uh, Kaya's mansion, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's like incredibly oppressive. That was like the word that kind of came to mind. Like, there's so much stuff everywhere, and it's all. It, it just, it's like a, you know, you, you get this idea that her parents were were kind of hoarders, and that they just like spent money because they had the money to spend, and it 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 you know, Kaya isn't like that. It's something that, um, you know, she's not really interested in. She's very different from kind of what you see that life, and then it's it works really well because Nami assumes. That Kai is a stuck-up rich, rich girl, mm -hmm. and come to find out, she's like, "Oh no!" She's like, "Most of this stuff doesn't mean anything to me." She's like, "Take whatever you want." She's like, <laughs> and then you know, she has a line where it's like, "I'd rather give it to charity anyway." And she's like, "Yeah, I'm not charity," and it's like, "Well," and it's and that is a great moment of weakness for Nami because clearly Kaya wasn't talking about her, but that's the way that she took it because there's a part of her that's broken. Um, and yeah, you know, it's those those things. It's those character moments that make up for uh, maybe maybe a sword flippy flops a little too much in one scene, or you know maybe there's some inconsistency with the with the uh, the voices of the characters, depending on you know these these little world inconsistencies or whatever that just aren't really that big of a deal when you have something that's as solid as this show. Um, it's just you know, and it's fun, and it it knows what it is, and it's not ashamed of what it is, and it's not. Uh, fourth wall breaking all the time like the Marvel stuff is to tell you that they know too that it's really goofy you know what I mean like it's it's mm -hmm. not like one of the the pirates picks up a snail telephone and then uh, Usopp's like ha, like looks directly at the screen he's like isn't that weird <laughs> like there's that that stuff doesn't exist in this they just exist in this world and it goes a long way to help you believe the world that you are currently watching agreed I don't really have anything else myself, man. Uh, I'm 
trying to think if there was anything else about the show. I mean, I you know, I highly recommend it. I think that uh Agreed. It's well worth your it's, time. It's well worth the the eight episodes, you know. Um it's a great a great way that you know, especially you know Joseph being someone who probably won't watch the anime, uh, it's a great way to be able to get into a a a story that maybe before had a very steep entry. You know, it it, it you have to pay mm-hmm. a high price uh, at this point to be a dedicated One Piece fan if you haven't been keeping up with it since you were you know younger or whatever, um, or if you just man i yeah it's like even you know i've watched a lot of stuff like naruto is a very big series if you're counting the original and uh shippuden um but one piece just puts it to shame it puts most of the stuff that i, I <laughs> one piece is so long that i think most of the stuff since i started watching it again last year i think you could fit a a, a lot of the stuff that i've watched into this show you know you could you could watch full metal alchemist brotherhood probably over 30 times and you still wouldn't be through the number of episodes that are in one piece (coughs) so yeah that's a crazy amount it's it's big man um and i i i hope that this is there's a couple things that i hope come out of this um i hope that just like with arcane season two lives up to expectations and they don't muck it up um, I hope that creatives, especially Netflix, and I have a, a, a dog in this fight for a reason, which I'll explain in a second. Netflix takes the correct lessons away from adapting this and the failures that they've had in the past um, because Mark Millar, who I'm sure Jake in particular is tired of me talking about at this point, but um, – there's a reason for it. I, I, he legitimately, I think, is one of the greatest living writers at this point, like creative writers at this point. <laughs> there aren't a lot of people doing the kind of stuff that he is. Um, he has a sort of like running contract with uh, Netflix to adapt his material. Um, the Magic Orders. Mark pro- Miller and Blink-182, according uh, to Lupa. Uh, Millar. It's not Miller. Oh, Malar. Sorry. He's uh, Scottish, I believe. I'm just going to call his name Miller, though. I don't know. What if people started calling you Natchins? Joseph Natchins. He's already, he's already Miller for me. Too late. Um, he, he has a lot of really, really cool stories. Uh, stuff that being adapted into movies or television, you know, whatever the case may be, would work really well. Um, And I'm just worried that they can't handle it. They don't have the proven track record for me to be like, I am convinced that you guys are actually going to put the love and care into a potential live action for this uh, the way that it needs to be. Um, I also think they're going about it wrong. Um you know, he's got, he's been writing since I think 2004. That's when Wanted came out, the graphic novel. Or the original, like, run oh. of Wanted came out in 2004. And right. they made that the movie, which a lot of people like. It's <laughs> it's in name only, really, related to, the, the main character has the same name, um, but in name only. It's, it's they're, <laughs> they're very, very different uh, uh, pieces of entertainment. Um, and uh, I think the biggest problem with Wanted in particular right now is that you wouldn't be able to it, it's it's pretty edgy um, I, maybe I've mentioned this on the show before but it's one of those things that even that I'd be like they could probably tone down some of the stuff that goes on in that story and uh, maintain the um, the uh, the source material without uh you know, they don't have to like screw it up completely, but there's probably some stuff in there that's like, I don't think most audiences are going to latch onto this if you go hardcore into this story. Like, it's just, it's, it's pretty edgy. Um, but he's got some really, really cool stuff. And then, you know, it all culminates in the stuff that he's writing currently. Um, and it would be awesome to be able to see like Kick Ass and Kingsman uh, and Wanted and like all these characters that show up in Big Game. 
uh, in a live action version of that. That it, it all builds up to this thing. And then, to be honest, dude, partially because if if they did it correctly, you would get a lot of those same uh, moments that uh, people talked about, like those those water cooler moments of uh, Game of Thrones. But, but the thing is, is that it has to be done properly, like with any show. Um, right. If you if if you adapt it properly, the potential is there to be like, holy smokes! Like, have you been watching the season of whatever? Can you believe this thing uh, happened or whatever? It's that kind of stuff. Um, it could have the same kind of uh, fan following as something like those first th- those those three seasons of Daredevil did on Netflix back when they like actually cared about what they were doing to some degree. Um, yeah. It's it's that kind of stuff, and and that's why I'm 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 nervous not just for. And, and think about it, like Arcane and One Piece are both Netflix properties, but they're it, to some degree they're the exception and not the rule. Yeah, um, exactly, that's a good way to put it. There's so much stuff uh, that Netflix has just dropped the ball on that I'm like, you know, Malar needs just he needs to have like a lot of creative control over this stuff. 